You've heard of the phrase raining cats and dogs, but for people in the military, it sometimes rains food, drink, and even ammunition. How, you might ask? Well, let's take a walk. Here in Sambaong Camp is a unit called the Air Terminal Company, and they're the ones who make raining supplies, or what the military calls airdrops, possible. An airdrop is an important form of resupply, used in situations where ground-based transportation is unable to reach troops in a training or operational area. Whether an airdrop is successful depends on a few factors. First of all is the packing of the parachute. You need to be sure everything is being packed properly so the chute will be deployed properly so that the loads can touch the ground safely. And second thing is the rigging of all the resupplies into the loads itself is also important itself. If not, the thing will be crashed when it's landed. And uh, thirdly is actually the loading into the aircraft. Okay? This is where we work with uh, actually uh, Air Force to make sure the thing is loaded safely into the aircraft and positioned nicely. And of course, the last phase is um, the pilot, okay, play a part uh, of dropping the thing uh, in, um, onto the drop zone itself. And uh, these are human factors and the other factors like uh, weather conditions, okay. Um, we need to look at the weather, like rain uh, or wind conditions. In a normal airdrop, the drop is usually done almost directly above the drop zone. However, with newer technology, airdrops can be done higher and further away from the drop zone. This is the Precision Aerial Delivery System, or PADS. Using GPS, it can guide the supplies to a predetermined location. It is typically used where precise delivery is key to the operation. The PADS comprises of the Airborne Guidance Unit, or AGU, and two parachutes. The AGU is the brains of the PADS, responsible for calculating its course one flight and steering the parachute. The first parachute is the droke chute. When deployed, it exerts enough pulling force to deploy the larger main parachute. This main parachute is the Ram Air Type Parafoil Parachute, similar to the ones used by the Red Lions at the National Day Parade. Its unique shape allows it to be steerable. Once the PETS is deployed out of the plane, the first thing is the AGU system will start to search for the GPS. The moment the GPS is locked, Okay, it will sense that a drop chute that okay, we are in this area and we have to open up the drop chute. So the moment the drop chute is open, okay, the drop chute will pull the main chute out. So when the main chute is out, the system will start to steer to your destination. The steering is done via a series of motors, basically like a human using both his hands to pull and slacken the strings attached to the parachute. The pads can be deployed from 5,000 to 25,000 feet above ground. A minimum height of 5,000 feet is necessary to give the GPS on the AGU sufficient time to lock onto the satellite. To operate the pads, soldiers must first undergo the basic aerial cargo rigger course, followed by the pads operator course. At the pads operator course, they learn how the whole system works, how to operate the AGU, how to pack the parachutes, as well as how to mount the parachutes on the load. Trainees are also taught how to operate the pads manually. This is actually a simulated pads system that we actually had during our pads course. So what I'm holding now is actually a handheld remote control, which is mainly for to control the pads. In case of any emergency where the, where the GPS condition doesn't work properly, and this is where handheld control comes into the picture. So do you mind if you teach me how to use it? Oh, sure. So basically, this joystick will actually control the direction of the pads. Okay. So by moving, if you want the, the direction to be moved to, towards the left, you just control push towards the left, and it will start to steal. And you want to go to the right, just steal to the right. So once you get the direction correctly, if you want it to calm it down faster, you just uh, simply push it down towards the flare direction. Okay. And it will actually fasten the process of it moving down. Okay. All right. So. Let me give it a go and see if uh, what it takes to be a pets operator. Oh crap! After that crappy landing, I decided to hang up the remote for good and leave the jobs to the professionals. The option of the remote control allows ground troops who are trained in its use to handle contingencies. For example if the GPS fails or if they have moved to a new position. Airdrops have long been an important means of resupply, 
providing troops with essential supplies like food, water and ammunition. With systems like the pads and its highly trained operators, airdrops have become a faster and more precise way to deliver supplies on time, on target.